gonna start talking about how, how I'm painting up this model. So as you can see, I have the hull already, well, partially painted and in Panzer Grey. You might be wondering, why is uh, a 1943 Tiger in Panzer Grey? That's because I am trying to replicate one of the Kharkov Tigers that was redeployed, obviously, from Kharkov to Kursk. So they were still grey with Dunkel Gleb overspray camo stripes. So obviously I had to paint in the, 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 the original Panzer Grey before I come in and start doing the camouflage um, stripes. Um, so um, I think it was 13th Company or 14th Company 1st SS that um, the Kharkov uh, Tigers were from. I always get confused, I think Fitman was 13th and they were 14th or the way around, I can never remember. Anyway, so I'm just going to like talk us through how I go about doing the Panzer Grey because the turret is yet to be painted in the Panzer Grey colour. So I'm just going to blue tack uh, the turret to this um, small bottle here so I can just handle it. A lot of people ask me how do I mount my, my things for painting, well it's as simple as that. The blue tack and like a, an appropriate handle. And I will be using Vallejo Surface Primer um, German Grey, or Panzer Grey should I say. Um, yes I have the model pre-primed already in grey. Um, that's just look for any blemishes and a lot of people ask why should you prime? Well primers have a self-leveling kind of property to them so if there's any blemishes on the plastic a primer will actually self-level that out and give it maybe a slight filling so that's why you don't go too heavy with um, primer especially around the gun barrel where I've um, I've used the kit original gun barrel and I just sand it down the seam and then a layer or two of surface primer has actually hidden the seam and then I just added some cast texture to the muzzle brake and the small muzzle brake um, retaining uh, bracket or screw which you can't really see too well uh, but it's there anyway. So give us a good shake and we'll get cracking. To start breaking up the kind of solid monotone colour of the Panzer Grey, we're going to start using progressively lighter shades of grey. And we're going to start doing what we call panel highlights or panel fades, that will be just simply applying the paint um, colours which are progressively lighter to the centre of the panels and leaving the edges. It makes nice contrast and helps break up the model, and it's not as difficult or as intensive as modulation. So I've taken some Vallejo Model Air black, black Grey and I just place a little bit into my airbrush and I'm just going to start focusing in uh, the centres of the panels and leaving the edges and the, the recesses in the original Panzer Grey.
found the first um, coat or several coats of black grey. The trick is to slowly build it up because sometimes when you're working in dark colours like this it can be a bit hard to see the tone difference especially when um, each tone is somewhat subtle so you can start over um, overworking a piece or even start pimpling too much paint onto the model which I almost did there on the top of the turret roof. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this dry and I'm going to put uh, a second highlight colour, this time using dark grey blue mixed in with a small amount of US grey but just a, sm a very very small amount so I don't want this colour to be too bright, it has to be subtle so I'm literally putting maybe 80% um, of the darker colour to 20% of the lighter down our mixture of um, dark grey blue mixed with US grey again from Model Air and I've mixed it with about 20% of US grey to 80% dark grey blue. Um, trick is when working with mixtures is to allow the colour to dry fully before we apply anything else just to understand how it's going to look because sometimes with a mixture with a mixture especially when we spray it or paint it on it might look one way but then when it dries the U might change ever so slightly so I'm going to allow this to dry at least three quarters of the way again with, with uh, acrylic paint that dries pretty quick but we can see the slight colour difference now between different gradients on the side as well and I'm going to keep adding gr lighter grey to this now from here on in but I'm going to be focusing once again onto lighter areas and more localised areas so the lighter the colour, the more focal and the more local. Yeah, that rhymed. Ha ha ha. So the lighter the area, the more focused area we spray it on. We don't want to go too mad and over overwhelm the viewer's eye, if you will. So I'm going to allow this to dry. I'm going to mix a bit more light grey or US grey into my mix. Keep working on that kind of bluish hue. And then we should be left with something like this. colors a little bit too dark so I'm just going to apply a little bit more pale grey into my mix even though these are all model air colors I find when you start mixing colors from the model air range do put a drop or two of airbrush thinner into your cup and it will definitely improve the um, the flow of your paint See how I'm beginning to edge highlight the uh, edges of the turret, and that's just done to help give a bit of continuity to these highlighting lines I'm adding to the model. Other otherwise, it kind of looks a little bit um, all over the place. It just adds a container, if you will, to the colours, and it just stops. It gives like a start and finish to the colour gradient, which I find sometimes beneficial. So there we go, nice and simple. 
And then I can mop this in if I want to. So I'm just modeling in the color into certain places. I'm only applying tiny amounts of paint while I do this. And I'm just basically trying to feather the starkness of the color gradient. Now I'm going to do that on the gun barrel and I'm, I'm actually just going to focus in the middle of the segments of the gun barrel, each step if you will. And I'm just going to There we have it. It is a bit light, but um, you can always, uh, when you put your washes over this too, you want to tone it down regardless. Okay, now we'll move on to the side of the fable. And once again, being really, really careful. I find, um, I find a good method or motion while spraying the sides of a fable is to do it in a, a stroking motion. <laughs> That's what she said. Anyway, uh, um, so you do it like almost like you're doing um, a dot filter, and you're almost simulating the streaks of the of wear and tear and uh, bleaching, if you will. I find it's, it's a little bit more forgiving to do it that way. And also, it's just handy for making a few in <laughs> a few throwing in a few uh, innuendos here and there too. There you have it, a very simple way of how I do Panzer Grey without losing the U completely. It does look a bit brighter on the camera than it does in real life. So if I show you the hole, again it does look a bit bright and a bit overexposed. But it's also to do with the fact that um, there's a little bit of a glossy finish to this for some reason, or satin finish. You get that sometimes with model air colours until you seal them. Um, so it does look slightly brighter than it actually does, but it's a nice way of giving colour. And then again, you can add extra contrast, or even if you find it too bright, you can tone it down using washes and what have you. Um, sometimes when you're painting, because you're putting down heavier washes that tend to make the paint very dark, it's no harm to go maybe a couple of, a couple of values brighter than what you're working with, because you will be toning it back with your weathering.